Hi, Gene Burnett from GeneBurnett.com. Um, I'm going to show another uh, Qigong exercise today. Um, this is primarily for my students who are learning this as a memory aid and just to help them sketch it out a little bit between lessons. Um, we've previously done the crane, which works on expansion and contraction, uh, or I don't like to use the word contraction, maybe expansion and shrinking or opening and closing, that kind of movement. There were some variations where we did different hand positions, but and we did the, the bounce, which is about coiling into the legs, and the spring, which is a little slower version of that. Um, if you're interested in those, search uh, Crane Cools Wings, Jean Burnett, or the spring and the bounce, Jean Burnett. Um, this one is called the clam. Um, all of these fall under the uh, Ome Mountain Qigong that uh, my teacher Andy Dale learned from Chung Da Chen uh, in Seattle. I'm not sure why this one's called the clam, but uh, that's what it's called. And as usual, I'm going to start with the, the bone level first. So um, I'm going to start in a back stance. This is going to be my front wall here in front of me. I'll, I'll give you some other views as well. Um, I'm in a back stance, which means my weight's on my back foot, front foot's empty. If I'm facing you, that means that this foot has space behind it. It's not over here where it would bunk into the other foot. If I drew it straight back here, I'm sitting into the crease, so I'm not out here like that. I'm not doing this into the crease here. Same position as we do the bounce in. Um, so you're in a back stance, like so. Left hand, in this case my forward foot, left foot, left hand is up in front of me like that. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little wind up to the right. And then I'm going to shift my weight forward and swing my hands up like this. Notice my back heel's lifted. When I reach the peak of this comfortable swinging reach, I'm going to slightly twist in both directions. So this hand's going to twist this way. The back hand's going to twist that way, the opposite way. And I'm not just turning my wrists. I'm twisting into the forearm and elbow a little bit, shoulder blades right across my back. If I continued indefinitely, I would end up doing like a bagua move like that. That's obviously too far for Tai Chi, so I'm not going to do that. But I'm going to do a wind up here, swing forward like this, slight twisting reach. Now I'm going to put my heel down on the ground again, same 60 degree angle as I had before. Put the heel down, shift the weight back to the right leg or the back leg and form a holding the ball position here. So this is round, I'm not like this, not like this, in between. And notice too when I come back, my right leg or my back leg is going to be almost straight. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing this, I'm not coming back to a bent leg like that back to a nearly straight leg. Now I'm going to sink on that right leg, stay back as I turn, and return back to where I started. So um, other side, here, turning, shifting forward, slight twisting reach, put the heel back down, shift the weight back, holding the ball here, Sink and turn. Another view, back view, winding up, shifting forward, slight twisting reach, put the heel down, shift the weight back, float the ball, sink and return to the starting position. So basically, you've got three positions. This one, this arm is rounded. Weight on the back leg, front foot empty, this arm is rounded, that's position number one. Now I'm going to do this wind up to get me to the second position. Here's a little secret about this back hand. If I think of winding up behind me, I end up with it behind me and I've broken this bow here. So instead, I want to think of my hand swelling in the same direction my back toe is pointing. So if I just think of like I'm painting the ground with my fingers, if I do that motion there, while I turn my waist, this becomes this. And even though the circle might seem like it's behind me, if you were looking at me, if you were looking at me, you'd think, oh, that's behind me, but it's not actually behind me. It's at my side. I've just turned my, I've just turned my body. So from here, doing that wind up. So some stuff that can go wrong here is that I reach behind me like that, or that I turn this hand over 
or that I bring this hand around with a lot of hand motion here, it's not a lot of hand motion, it's just a turn of the waist, see? This hand's just doing that. There is a little bit of sway in the joints here if you get pretty refined about it, but there's no gross hand movement, it's just a turn of the waist. Now from here, I'm going to shift my weight forward to my front leg, and I'm going to swing from my shoulders here, not, not like, woo, loose, but I'm going to like let it be controlled, but I'm not doing this, I'm not picking this up and carrying this forward like that. I'm letting gravity help right here, down, and then I'm just letting that continue, and I'm adding a little bit here to just make that come to, to this point. Here are some things that can go wrong, reaching too far, ending up way out on your front toes, lifting your shoulders, of course, um, reaching too high so you can't see your hand anymore. So you want to have it just be a nice, comfortable, this is my just natural comfortable reach, and from there I want to go just a little bit further, a little bit further, just a gentle reach, and a slight twist here, slight twist there. Now here, if I turn my heel inwards while I come back, Everything's okay here, but then when I go to turn and square myself, it's hard on this knee. So what I want to do instead is I just want to set the heel down. Once I've set it down, I want to shift back on a fairly straight leg when I form the ball. Because if I go back on a bent leg here, then this ends up being just a pretty much a hand movement or a waist-powered movement, and I want it to be powered by some kind of a leg movement. So from here, I'm going to put my heel down, when I shift my weight backwards, I want it to be on a more or less straight leg so that when I finish, I can sink. So when I go back, the upper hand, I just think of my elbow getting heavy and I'm turning towards it. So I'm relaxing my inner shoulder, dropping my elbow, and I'm turning towards it, closing this distance here. The other hand, when I make my turn, it just comes along for the ride. So there's my ball. What I don't want to do is switch hands. And I also don't want to feel like I need to lift something or make something happen. It's the core motion is just this. It's weight back, turn. So from here, heel down, weight back, turn. Now from here, I'm going to sink. And as I sink, this hand just comes down, kind of like a paintbrush, like that kind of motion. So that's just coming down. The other hand is again swelling a little bit, same direction my back toe is pointing, swells a little bit. That's all it does independently is that. But when I do that and turn my waist, I end up with this circle. That's a lot like throwing a frisbee, except you're throwing it with your weight on your back leg instead of going forward like you normally would with a frisbee throw. So you stay here, sink and turn and finish. So that's kind of the bone level of it. So I'm just going to do it without talking. Okay, now muscle level of this is I want to start smoothing it out and make it more and more relaxed, more heavy, more soft, almost like I'm a little drunk or a little sleepy. It's got a heavy feeling. So it's a stepping stone, it's a stage, but in that stage you want to feel as soft as you can. Don't let the softness or relaxation crumple your posture. Keep your internal posture intact, but keep it soft. So one muscle level point that's always helpful is don't stop. Just slow down and put the heel down. Weight comes back. Don't stop. Just slow down and sink. When you reach the end, don't stop. Slow down and go again. So it's a nice way to keep the movements uh, continuous so you don't have to kind of restart it. You just slow down, and I mean slow down. I mean slow down a lot. It'll seem almost like you've stopped. You'd have to look pretty closely to see that I haven't stopped, in fact. So it's not doing this. It's not kind of slurring it together so that there's no clear positions. You still want this position, this position is here, you still want the wind up, you still want this to be a very clear position and just very, very slow. And then back, and slow, and sink, and so Keeping the shoulder, the muscles should feel just like they're relaxed. The shoulders are down, muscles just like wax pouring off your skeleton.
really, really soft. So where the muscle, where the bone level, sorry, feels uh, uptight a little bit, a little bit kind of tight and held, because you're so posture conscious, you're adhering to the posture. Muscle level feels soft. You're relaxing into the posture, and it feels heavy. It feels really kind of weighted. Um, now to go to the energy level or the um, nervous system level or the joint level, um, the next thing we're going to do is suspend the joints as though they're on ropes, like there's a string on every joint in your body and your imaginary puppeteer above you is gently wiggling those strings all the time to make sure the joints don't need any oil. So you have this nice, open, loose feeling. So instead of light and kind of held in the bone level, and instead of uh, totally deflated and heavy, kind of, you know, solid downward movement in the muscle level, you're kind of in between. You're heavy and light. You're not totally kind of deflated balloon, but you're not a fully inflated one either. You're half and half. This is where it really starts to become Tai Chi, like the yin-yang symbol. Um, you start to have the firmness and the softness in equal measures. So you have that suspended feeling in the joint so that all the way through the motion, as you have your good posture and you don't stop at the end, you have this this malleability, this wiggle inside, I'm exaggerating, this so you can, exaggerating it so you can see it better, but inside there, there's a slight motion in, inside the joints as you go, I'm really making that obvious. But when you do it, uh, you know, for real, you, you don't have to make it that obvious. It's just that inside the joints, there's a little bit of play all the time. It keeps that circulation open in the joints. Um, whatever circulates through the joints, whatever your conception of chi is, uh, nerve flow, muscle f uh, connections, hormones, blood, lymph, all kinds of things go through those joints. So don't let them be limp, right? And don't let them be tense. The idea is in between. The only time they really have to be tense is moments of impact. But even then, it's just a moment of impact and then it's relaxed again. So now that the joints are loose and comfortable, you, of course you've got good posture and your muscles are nice and soft, then you can sync it up with your breathing. So this is inhaling through the nose as you wind up, going forward. This is all one long inhale through the nose. This is exhale through the mouth, back, and sink, and finish. So it's inhale. And exhale. So again, your inhale is about your 80% comfortable inhale is what gets you to this place here. So if you can't do that, if by the time you get there you're gasping for air, then you can't work on the breathing. You just have to set that aside. Work on posture. When you have the posture, work on relaxation. If it's relaxed, open the joints. If the joints are open, connect to your breath. But if the breathing makes you tense, forget the breathing and relax. If the relaxation makes you forget what you're doing, forget the relaxation and work on the skeletal or alignment and what you're doing in the exercise. But as soon as you know that, then start working on the relaxation. As soon as it's relaxed, float the joints, add the breathing. So this should be an 80% inhale to this place, and then this is an 80% exhale through here and back to here. Um, our intent on this one, what this one focuses on, for one thing, it focuses on the idea that the outer body follows the inner body, and the upper body follows the lower body. So the, you could, you know, the lower body swings the hand up, the lower body drags it back and turns. So legs and waist control this. Um, also, it's working on the Chan Su Jin, the, the, the cork the screw or spiraling, silk reeling energy. Um, you get a little bit of the spiral quality in through here, here, here. So you get, you're getting some of that. Um, it includes the expansiveness of the crane. I'm only that far from doing the crane, I'm very close to the crane. And it also includes the spring because I'm sinking and turning. So that's exactly the same from the waist down as the, as the spring. So it has the opening and closing of the crane. It has the coiling and sinking of the spring. So I usually tell people if you're only going to practice one of the ones that we do, um, do the clam because it's the most inclusive. 
it's the most complicated one in uh, at this point when you're when you're studying this. Uh, it's the at this point it's more complicated than the crane, more complicated than the spring. It usually takes a few lessons to feel comfortable, but um, it's uh, it's the most inclusive one. So I tell my students if you only have time to practice one, do the clam because it's got the kind of the crane in it and it's got the spring in it. If you have time to practice two, do the clam and the bounce and the spring because that's just so important and you get to work the spring on every single movement instead of just every third movement. And then if you have time for three, go for the go for the crane. I just teach the crane first because it's so symmetrical and simple and easy, easy to learn. So again, the clam, I start here, winding up as I'm inhaling through the nose, shifting my weight forward, slight twisting reach, heel comes down, weight comes back, sink and turn. I usually do six or seven on each side as a nice measure. I'm going to give you a back view now. So from here, turning, forward, back, sink and turn. So six or seven of those on each side is a nice little workout for the legs and uh, you get to work on your breathing and your spiraling and your opening and closing. Um, there's, there's still more to this than I can convey in a, in a relatively short video that I'm trying to keep short, but um, this is a good starter at least to check in with each level, the bone level, structure, muscle level, softness and flow, energy level, opening the joints and connecting to your breath. And, looking at the intent of the exercise, which is to spiral up, spiral down, and settle. And as well as working on expansion and contraction and the upper body following the lower body and the outer body following the inner body. So it's a little more, a little more to it. But um, anyway, that should hopefully at least give you an idea. If you're, if you're doing this cold, not being one of my students, um, just be careful about your alignment when you make that turn at the end. When you make the final turn, you're just sinking here, just like the spring. You're just sinking, you're not twisting in here. And when you go forward, you're not turning in the knees and feet here. Knees are always over, you know, pointing the same direction as the feet. If it starts to hurt in any way, aside from just a little muscle discomfort, if it starts to hurt, especially in the joints, then you need to stop and, and check with the with a teacher, someone who knows about alignment and balance and can help you do it, do it better. Because you should not feel any joint pain doing this. And, unless you have joint pain anyway. If your joints hurt all the time, then uh, really you should see a doctor. <laughs> but um, if, uh, if you have joint pain doing this, um, then uh, that's a sign to stop. Find a teacher, get some correction, because it should not hurt the joints. Okay, thanks for watching, appreciate it. Uh, subscribe to my channel, visit my website, jeanburnett.com, and have a nice day.